Hi everybody and welcome to Heal Heat. My name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Russ Haas. Yuri Robes, everybody. That was awesome. This is our WWE show for the week. And we'll go into the first, uh, first part of the night. We had John Cena come out, start talking, which brought out Vicky Guerrero. Starts talking. Yeah, she says, well, since you're here, let's bring out Ryback and we'll make the stipulation for extreme rules since everybody else is going to be extreme so do you guys and it's now a last man standing match which correct me if I'm wrong has Cena ever lost the last man standing match? has Cena ever really lost a gimmick match? yeah he lost a yeah didn't he lose a ladder match? yeah he lost yeah. lost a Ziggler in the ladder, yeah, ladder match I don't think he's lost a last man standing match I, th I kind of, it's almost one of his specialties because he had one against JBL. Mm -hmm. He had one against Batista. I want to say he had one against Daddy too, didn't he? Yeah, he lost that one because that was back when he was still legit. Oh, yeah. But anyway, so we got, a, we got a stipulation for their match at Extreme Rules. And then we go into the, uh, the first actual match of the night Randy Orton versus Damian Sandow. I know this was your favorite part of the show. Oh my god, Sandow came out and he did his version of Randy Orton's theme song. I, I thought it was tremendous. I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. The match was good too, really good match. Orton got the win. Uh, I don't think Sandow got hurt. I think it helps Sandow more than it hurts him being in there with a guy like Orton. Oh it does. Look, look at the match that Orton and Cody had last week. That was uh, a pay-per-view worthy match. This one wasn't too far from it, I don't think. No. Um, then coming out of it, uh, after working one, he's going into the back and he gets knocked out by show. Setting up yet another pay-per-view match. So they're starting to flesh out the pay-per-view more uh, as we get closer. I think, what is it, two weeks away? Something like that, yeah. Or two weeks or two. Yeah, two weeks. Which we're starting to get the rest of the card filling out. Um, next, coming out, coming out next, we had a Y2J and Tons of Funk came out to judge Fandango's match against R-Truth. And they did their normal, they gave him twos, everything Truth did, they gave him a ten. Fandango walks away from the match at one point, they all give it a two. And basically building the Y2J versus Fandango feud a little bit further. Yeah, I don't know. I think that they're, they're probably going to kill this kid's character. I don't know. Uh, that's just me. I think they're going to get people sick of it. Well, next week they're having to dance off with him, him and Jericho. But, you know. Now, speaking of characters, they're actually doing right. We had the Shield versus Kofi Kingston and the Uso brothers. You really forgot El Alberto Del Rio versus Ziggler? Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. The next match was Alberto Del Rio versus Dolph Ziggler. Of course, as every match that these guys in this three-way have, everybody else gets involved in it by the end. It just becomes a hodgepodge. Uh, you know, I know you're a big fan of Swagger, mm -hmm. but if this was a if this was Del Rio versus Ziggler, do you think it would be better than than the three-way? I honestly think it would. Not not no knocking off of Swagger. Just saying, I, I think the feud between Del Rio and Ziggler would be better without Swagger in. I think, well, they're going to root Swagger out, I think. Uh... Well, the thing of it is, like, in a three-way feud, I, I, I could see where Del Rio has problems with Swagger and Ziggler. Mm -hmm. But why does Swagger hate Ziggler and why does Ziggler hate Swagger? They've never really covered that, you know what I mean? They could make a backstory up without any any time of the <coughs> being the fact that they were tagged together for so many years. Too. I'm just saying, like, um, to me, it's Swagger's like in there just to have something to do. Well, this was Swagger's original uh, push. Yeah, this was his original uh, opponent was ADR, and it kind of Ziggler got into it. Really, I mean, it, it was, and I thought it was a decent little uh, program that him and ADR were having. Yeah, I, I I don't know. That's just my opinion. I think it's going to be a little muddled. Well, I I think the three of them together are going to put a hell of a match on. I think in ring, I think you're you're going to be impressed with that match. That's the match I'm looking forward to at the pay per view. Um, 
a ladder match between the three of them. You got a guy that could take, I mean, all three of you guys could take bumps. They're not afraid to get hurt. But the thing is, you got Swagger, which is a big, I mean, Swagger's a powerhouse compared to these other two. I mean, Del Rio's not a small guy, but Swagger's a power wrestler. I think that's going to be in effect for the ladder match. Now, going back to where I, where I skipped ahead, we have the Shield versus Kofi and the Usos. Shield goes over strong, um, look good out there. Dean Ambrose uses his finisher. Um, that I guess I guess he called a reverse DDT. I, I forget what he used to call it on the Indies, but basically puts him in the headlock and falls forward. I, I guess for the sake of not having a better name, we're calling it the reverse DDT. You know, it's not. I, I don't know what you would call it. But anyway, if you know, put it in the comments. Put it down where? Out there. That's a quick one. Um, I enjoy the Shield. The Shield I, continually, continuously being booked strong is very impressive. I think it's the most. Or I think that's the best thing that the writing staff has done in a long time is the Shield. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's original in a way where usually you have a faction that's gets to be five six guys. I like the three man because I mean, it, like, it reminds me like of the, the three birds. man band. No. I like the fact that they destroyed them, but. Uh, most like so the end of was like twenty guys. Evolution think, was four, four horsemen. Do you think they learned from the mistakes of Nexus and used the mistakes of Nexus before they booked the Shield? Oh yeah, because I, 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 Nexus started off hot. Oh, it was. It was. It started. Off, that was probably one of the hottest things going right at that point. And then they just crapped it out within within a month. It got destroyed. Well, it's kind of like with TNA with the Aces and Eight. It just started off white hot, but. You know, writing. Then uh, coming back to someone who hasn't been booked well recently, actually two someones that haven't been booked well recently, Antonio Cesaro and Zack Ryder. Zack is continuing to get more and more away from his woo-woo-woo character and more serious. He's not spiking hair no more. He's not fist bumping into the ring. He's not wearing the sunglasses out there. He's more of a serious wrestler. But in this match, it doesn't matter because this was, in my opinion, a showcase for Antonio Cesaro, who's been jobbing a lot lately for them to go, okay, remember this is what this guy can do, and he just destroyed Ryder. Now you were telling me, what was the match he had with Kofi, the rematch where he did the the big swing? And the... Yeah, he, he was on the, uh, that was on main event. Yeah. He did the uh, giant swing with holding one leg on Kofi. And then he also did the superplex for, with Kofi standing on the apron all the way in. Yeah. I mean, Cesaro is one of the most gifted athletes in the ring today. And I'm glad to see him finally back on the winning path. Yeah. Um, let's, let's hope it stays this way. Now, next we had the thing that was teased all night. All day. All Dude. day. Yeah. All, if you have any of their WWE, if you look at them online anywhere, they tease this. Uh, Paul Heyman and Brock Lesnar went to WWE headquarters and destroyed Triple H's office. One of the things I thought was a subtle hint was them destroying the big gold belt, the uh, World Heavyweight Championship. That was the one that was Flair, Flair gave to him, right? Yeah, but I think they used it. Oh, they used a different one, I'm sure. <coughs> to me, it looked like the replica one they sell for yeah. like $300. Yeah. I'm sure he they, they weren't tearing up Flair. No, I don't think he was his real office. I mean, well, it might have been his real office, but I don't think the office furniture was his or the laptops or anything were. I mean, that if it was office furniture, for a guy of Triple H's stature, he doesn't have freaking Ikea furniture. He has nice Italian-made, you of know. Well, he's got the best of the best. Hunter Hunter's I didn't like the touch that they put his... I mean, they probably did use. <laughs> they probably did use portions of it when they went into the office. They didn't actually show him walking in the doorway. So I think they, in my opinion, I don't know if this is what was done, and I might be wrong. They might have used his real office, but the, I think they went to a different room that was just empty, or either that or Triple H says, "Hey, I got. I want to redecorate this. What can we do to use this in a gimmick?" But I like that they had Paul Levesque on the door on that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, it was a little touch, but it was something for the inside fans that know to go, oh, that's, that's a cool little touch. Came off well, I thought. Triple H came out, talked junk to Heyman, talked about they destroyed his one office, but he's standing in his other office. Yeah. 
Isn't it funny that this office is in the middle of the Undertaker's yard? Well, the, this, the, not the Undertaker's yard anymore, that's the Shield's yard. Anyway. Um, I'm going to ask your opinion. You know, it's going to be their third match. Who's going to win the tiebreaker? In your opinion right now, the way things said. For business, Brock should win. Exactly. Solid. But you never know. I, I mean, he does think, get involved. I don't think he should totally kill uh, Hunter, but I think he should get over because they do have him for another year. they got big plans for him. They're not going to put him in a match against Zack Ryder or anything like that. They're going to put some marquee matches up. And to have him job <coughs> in the last match. We'll talk about that a little bit. Okay. And our next our next match of the night was our six woman divas match. Uh, the Bellas and AJ Lee versus the Funkadactyls and Caitlyn. They're continuing doing the stalker gimmick or whatever with Caitlyn. Uh, they came out the Bellas. Basically, the whole thing of it was the Bellas left AJ for Caitlyn to beat her. Um, they come out since and said that that's what she gets for taking their number one contender. I guess at that what was it? A, at the Battle Royal she wanted. Mm -hmm. But that's the logic they said. I forget if they said it on their Twitter or whatever. But it was it was your spot to put the, the six women out there. And coming off of that, <coughs> we're going and ready to know our question of the week from last week. Now, since the Bellas have came back, Nikki Bella has gotten augmentations. Yeah. Does that hinder twin magic, because you could obviously tell who was who now. And uh, before we get into our opinion, let's go into our friends here. We got the first is from Aaron Least. When it comes to boobs, the bigger the better. Can't argue with that. Next one's from Mike Kirwan 12, seven, I'm sorry, 1237. I think it'll hurt twin magic, but WWE are just going to ignore it and hope more, more people will not notice. And last but not least, our friend Closure Domus. 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 I let the A's breathe. There you go. <laughs> Twin Magic has already <laughs> suffered be because of Nikki's knockers. Three weeks ago, they were disqualified from the number one contenders battle royal. And last week, the ref reversed the decision because Naomi told on her. To quote Mr. Mazan, and really, they look good on her, though. I, I can't argue with the fact that they look good. I mean, I don't think you, well, you might argue because. No, I like big boobs, I cannot lie. And I think the other twin is just go ahead and break down and get herself a pair. Well, that's your opinion on it, that she should. Do you think that, I think they should just get away from twin magic since they obviously could tell the difference. This is this is wrestling. It is like cartoon land. You know what I'm saying? If, if the referees believe it, the referees believe it. I mean, at least when, and this is dating myself, when the Killer Bees did it, they had a similar build. When they would put the mask on, you couldn't tell the difference. Exactly. I, to me, it hurts. It hurts. Whenever you do something that hurts the intelligence of the fan, it hurts the product in my opinion. I, I think these two girls are good enough workers. They really don't need the twin magic. No, that's what I'm saying. They so, don't yeah. need it anymore. I mean, the Usos don't use it. They've got different tattoos, you know, all kinds of stuff. But they used to, the Usos, before they got all the tats, they used to switch off. Yeah. But now that, I mean, one's drunker than the other, I mean, bigger than the other, uh, you, they, let me show the tattoos, they don't need to do it. Now, coming off of that, our question of the week for this week was something that we talk, touched about a little bit, but we were going to get more of it with the question of the week. Would you like to see Brock Lesnar go after one of the world championships, either the WWE title or the world championship? Um, let us know what you think. Hit us up on our Facebook. Hit us up on our Twitter. Put it down where? Down there. Right down there in the comments. That's two in a row. Oh, I need, I need more juice. Now you're supposed to be Bow Breaker, not Barry Bonds. For Jose Canseco, then I was going to tell everybody. Huh. Got to put a lot of asses in the seats. Yeah, keep snitching, Jose. <laughs> anyway, back to the show, we had a Sheamus versus Wade Barrett. A pretty decent match. Um, the highlight of the match is after the match when uh, Mark Henry just whips Sheamus with a belt. And well, he's black and blue. So well, this match here was actually one of, I think it was supposed to be Sheamus's feud after Mania. It was supposed to be Barrett, wasn't it? I don't know. Um, hmm, they've changed so much back and forth. Well, they were teasing us for a while. <coughs> I guess with the whole 
Ryback turning the heel thing. They had to have someone for Henry to face. And I'm not a big fan of the feud between him and Sheamus. I hope they get over with quick. That was the shield, or that was the the altercation that turned Sheamus into a face was with Mark Henry. But I really don't want to see this match. I mean, I'm okay with it. I don't. It's two big guys slugging it out. Looks like it'll be some sort of a strap match stipula stipulation. So I'm okay with it. And then uh, we got the the main event of the night, Ryback versus Kane, which was set up earlier when Ryback, where Daniel Bryan challenged Ryback, and Ryback said, no, you're injured from the shield. And then Kane said, well, what about me? And Kane, Ryback says, well, there's only one real monster now, and that's me. And he proved it in a solid match. He went over, he went over clean on Kane. I mean... They needed something like this to build Ryback's character back up. Exactly, because I mean, I, I, I was on the internet today, and uh, someone on Facebook had a uh, thing on there saying, Ryback lost the last six pay-per-views in a row. Yeah. Uh, why is he getting the, the shot? You know, which he did. He lost the last clean to, to Henry, lost the shield a few times. Um, but this is the same situation they were talking about with Punk losing to Taker and stuff like that, you know losing too many matches in a row. I don't really think... Do you think it hurt him to lose that, that many pay-per-views in a row? I mean, Ryback, six was a lot. Ryback, yeah. Because Ryback... What about Punk? If it was Punk's Punk. different. Punk's an established main event. Ryback, you're trying to build into a main event. If he loses every significant match, how do you take him as a main event or series? No. Do you think, do you, do you the, think he's beaten Sanya? No. Okay, then. See, that's what I mean. He's no threat. I think that this match with Kane helped him out quite a bit, though. But well, too little, too late. This should have been like a, a, a pay-per-view match or something I, before. I do agree that him beating Kane clean helped. I think a lot of the problem is he got popular too quick and they tried to force him to the top. It really hurt that he lost SummerSlam when the Shield debuted. That hurt him to take his first loss there. It hurt when he lost in the six-man matches with the Shield. I mean... They could have easily took him out of those situations and had him feuding with other people, but they decided to keep him in. To me, it hurt him as a main event, to, in my opinion. So where the shield was building up, there was tearing down the right character. In, in a way, I just don't think... I can't take him as a serious threat. I, he's, he kind of feels like... And I hate going back old, but... He kind of feels like, remember when Bobby Heenan would bring in wrestler after wrestler to cha challenge Hulk Hogan? One week it would be mm -hmm. King Kong Bundy. Next week it would be, you know, Ratchet or whoever. Yeah, 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 yeah. The wrestler of the month, and they'd wrestle on Saturday night's main event, and there'd be no question that Hogan was winning. Exactly. Uh, and that's, that's my thing. If Ryback wins at the pay-per-view, I'll be shocked. Now, most likely that'll mean that Cena's more hurt than they're letting on, but... I'd be shocked because I think Cena's winning this one easy. Oh, me too. But uh, let's go right into the, the ranking of the show. We do our, our rankings. Uh, basically, we have a 1 to 5 scale, 5 being the best, 1 being the worst. 1's a John Cena, 2's a Big Show, 3's a Sheamus, 4's a Daniel Bryan, 5 is a CM Punk. What would you give the show, Gary? I'm giving it a Sheamus. You're a Sheamus? Uh, so I'll give it a solid Sheamus. It wasn't terrible, it wasn't great. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit lower than you. I'm gonna go I'm gonna give it a two, a big show. And to me, it was the the Mark Henry attack was awesome. The shield match was awesome. The Heyman segment was eh, it came off too dry. I mean I'll be honest with you what it got the three. It was the sand dial scene. Because I, I kept rewinding it and playing it. It was, it was hilarious. Well, it was I, liked, I enjoyed that. Yeah, that's, what got, that, that's the only reason it's got a three, to be honest with you. The reason I'm giving it a two, Fandango versus Truth could have been a solid match. They let it go. Uh, Cesaro versus Ryder was a squash, but it could have been a solid match. They could have built both guys up. Uh, Sheamus versus Barrett could have been a solid match, but they used it to build up Henry. I mean... I understand the decisions they made. It just wasn't that exciting to me. But anyway, uh, basically that's all I have to say about the show. Is there anything you need to add? That's it, my friend. Well, my name is George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes. And this has been Heal Heat.